Hi viewers, it's yet again another despicable discovery of the anti-democratic overreach of Justin Trudeau and his unbelievable liberal gang. Apparently, Arrive can is a pilot test for a digital ID program in partnership with the World Economic Forum. And it's just really shocking. I mean, to think that this entire time Canada has been getting swabbed up under the narcissistic Davos elites in conjunction with the Trudeau liberals represented by Justin Trudeau and Omar al -Kabra. You know, it was already suspicious enough that the Arrive can was one of Trudeau's top priorities in Canada. I mean, with the way these guys were hell-bent on forcing Canadians to give up their private health data, as well as other personal details, it was evident the Liberals were up to another of their narcissistic power grabs. But that most people wouldn't have probably thought these clowns would actually conspire with the WEF in implementing the club's megalomaniac and selfish globalists' agenda in the country. And worse still, do so without letting the Canadian populace have a say in whether they want the world economic tracking tool or not. You know, if this guy isn't among the leading unbelievable prime ministers in Canada's history and likely one of the most overwhelming PMs in the democratic world, then he'd likely be ranking as number one on another specially designed related list. But then, what's today's story all about? Let's get started right away, viewers. And while at it, please take a moment to quickly support the channel by hitting that subscribe button. Also, please leave a like and share this video with as many people as possible. So, in rather unbelievable manner, it turns out the effort of the World Economic Forum to test the use of digital ID in travel with the participation of the Canadian government was apparently postponed owing to the pandemic, according to Transport Canada. Through an inquiry of the ministry that Conservative Parliament member Leslin Liu submitted in June, specifics on the World Economic Forum's initiative known as the Known Traveler Digital Identity became public knowledge, but it got delayed because of the pandemic. Expressing herself on Wednesday while including a link to the inquiry in a tweet conservative parliamentarian, Leslin Liu has explained that the Trudeau Liberal government finally admitted that they have a $105.3 million contract with the World Economic Forum for the known traveler digital ID. Meanwhile, you would recall that during her campaign for party leadership earlier this summer, Liu had promised that if she were to be elected prime minister, she would withdraw Canada from participation in the project. In her tweet, Liu wrote, the government finally admitted that they have a $105.3 million contract with the World Economic Forum for the known traveler digital ID. Take a look at this order paper. It's no longer a conspiracy theory, it's a contractual fact. Apparently, since 2018, Canada's participation in the pilot project has been acknowledged in official statements, and the financial sum linked with it is stated in Budget 2021. Meanwhile, the other nation that is taking part in the World Economic Forum program is the Netherlands. Other partners include the airports of Toronto Pearson and Montreal Trudeau, as well as Amsterdam Schiphol Air Canada, Royal Dutch Airlines, and the Information Technology and Services Company, Accenture. Apparently, the urgent implementation of more comprehensive digital ID systems in society is one of the declared goals of the World Economic Forum. And according to the World Economic Forum Digital ID Guide for Executives, due to the fact that people, organizations, and internet-enabled devices are all interacting with one another virtually, there's an urgently required solutions that enable the establishment of trust between the forum and other people in the digital sphere, as well as carry out interactions that feel meaningful. In the same vein, according to the World Economic Forum's study on known traveler digital identity that was released last year, essentialization of ID management in Canada is something that Canadians are supposedly demanding. According to the paper, a digital identification infrastructure in Canada and other countries like it could benefit from a collaborative public-private approach. This would enable interoperability with various systems in the travel ecosystem to facilitate seamless interactions for travelers, such as at the airport to pass through security, board the plane and cross borders, all the way through car rental and checking into the hotel. According to the World Economic Forum, the known traveler digital identity has the potential to be developed such that it also includes information like immunization certificates. And of course, the WEF guys that came up with their scripted and shady narratives and were like, The need for trusted digital travel credentials as a result of COVID-19 is of the utmost importance, and it is clear, based on the various solutions that have emerged, that the pandemic has served as a burning platform urging stakeholders to get the design of trusted digital credentials for travel right. And in what appears to be somewhat disappointing, both the Trudeau Liberal government and the provincial governments in Canada have been striving to implement their own schemes in furtherance, of the World Economic Forum's Great Reset Agenda. But then, in a recent response to the inquiry into the ministry's operations, Transport Canada said that the project has not yet been initiated, that its execution has been hampered as a result of the pandemic, and that there is currently no estimated launch date. Maybe. And that's a rather emphasized maybe. 
One could say that maybe the pandemic was partly a blessing in disguise for Canadians. I mean, if not for that reason, probably by now, everyone would have been having themselves being closely monitored on the globalists' big screen. Similarly, the Netherlands has also halted the project due to some acclaimed changed priorities. Apparently, the known traveler's digital identity pilot project has equally not yet been implemented, according to Dutch Migration Minister Eric van der Berg, who explained last Thursday that there were currently no concrete plans to do so. Meanwhile, Transport Canada further explained that the digital ID initiative was apparently developed so that passengers would have the option to opt in or opt out. The department also said that information on the kind of data that was gathered and transferred, as well as the governments and third parties that were recipients of that data, is not currently accessible. However, the information that is planned to be shared would include components generated from the electronic passport that was utilized during a trial. The electronic passport, also known as the e-passport, is a kind of biometric passport that has an electronic chip that is programmed with the holder's personal biodata, as well as a digital photograph. And in the same vein, Transport equally mentioned that information on which KTDI technologies the government is testing is not available. However, prior to the deferral of the pilot, the proposed technologies to be used included distributed ledger technology, biometric technology, and cryptography. Similarly, the World Economic Forum's KTDI paper reveals the Canadian government actually tests the technology. Let's read this. The Government of Canada, in collaboration with Accenture, completed the testing of an interdepartmental government blockchain-based digital identity management platform in a simulated environment. It also says all partners are proud of the joint effort to develop the KTDI mobile application, which presumably involved testing. You know, it appears Trudeau and his government seem to give a new meaning to the word dishonest on each occasion. I mean, these guys have likely never once told the truth, and if it isn't a lie, you can bet it's definitely another manipulation. And you know, it still really perplexes me why the Trudeau liberals would even agree in the first place on implementing a globalist digital control policy at the World Economic Forum in a free and democratic country like Canada. Meanwhile, the majority of Canadians never voted for this. Apparently, apart from the fact that Justin Trudeau and his supporting cast of treasonous MPs need to be held accountable for aligning with the globalist agenda and digital control policies against Canada and Canadians that do not support the globalist Great Reset, it's just also very saddening that once again these liberal guys have apparently wasted Canadian taxpayers' money for something Canadians do not want and did not ask for. There's no need to invent conspiracy theories. The attempt by global elites to sever local democracy is fully on and in plain view. Canadians want nothing to do with the selfish World Economic Forum. And even if there may be a reset in Canada, it definitely won't be the one the narcissistic globalists and their supporting cast of treasonous international governments had imagined. And that's what I've got for you today, viewers. What are your thoughts on the apparent anti-people deal of the Trudeau liberals with the World Economic Forum Davos globalist in Canada? Please drop your opinions in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, please share our videos with as many people as possible. In the same vein, we created a Telegram group where we can discuss affairs that concern our country without fear of being censored for our comments. The link to the group is in the description. And keep in mind that we are always determined to boldly expose the hypocrisy of the left-wing and mainstream media while keeping you updated and conscious. You should also consider turning on your post notifications so you will be the first to know when a new video is released. See you at the next one. Thanks for watching.